and welcome to another edition of Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from The Moog Show. As always, I've got my beer drinking partner in crime, Paul Segura. What's up? Cheers. Research and development brewmaster from Carl Strauss. He gives me credit to drink on camera. Otherwise, I'm just a drunk uh, drinking beer on camera. Uh, today, we have <laughs> Circle Nine Brewing in the house. I have got Darren, the brewer and owner. And then I have his right-hand man, Jeremy. Jeremy is also the tasting room manager. How's it going, guys? Great. Great, yeah. Good Welcome to have you guys to on the show. Welcome to Beer for Breakfast. Yeah. We kind of had a pre-beer. What did, what did we start out with? Uh, Chiaco the Hog. So what is Chiaco the Hog? Chiaco the Hog, uh, he has his own Wikipedia, it's pretty cool. Um, he uh, is a character from Dante's Inferno. Oh. He is, uh, Dante runs into him in uh, the Gluttony Circle, which is appropriate oh. for being a hog. That's one of the nine circles, and is it not? Yes, Okay. true. So, um, Interesting character. It goes good because this beer has a lot of mosaic hops. So um, it's, it's delicious greedy. beer, man. We've been digging this for like the last half hour, right? Reminds me of another mosaic beer here in town. I'm not going to get name names or well, anything, but you know, you, it's <laughs> woo, that like, one's also very good. It's the best hop to come along in a while. I it think. really is. And mosaic you can't is fault anybody who wants to make beer with it because it's mm -hmm. got so much like tropical fruit and citrus. And well, and speaking of that, is that a fairly new hop? that came around or is it one that's been around maybe we didn't know it was so sexy or so. like right it was maybe four a, years it was a hybrid from simcoe okay right? yeah i think so um, it started out as hb 369 right? i believe right. they should have kept it that hb 369 why would they change that oh that's <laughs> that's silly that's <laughs> silly i don't know i don't Name know either. Hops. <laughs> but it's definitely my favorite hop it's sure. oh I've, so, i go between that and nelson because you know, Nelson kind of, how can Nelson's you know? Nelson's great too. Yeah. 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 All right. I gotta, but, maybe, oh yeah. maybe Carl I Strauss can, this. can give me some Nelson. This, there you go. Oh, so I know sometime. a guy. I you know, know a guy. guy. <laughs> I'll introduce you sometime. I would kill. How did you know we had any? For some Nelson hops. <laughs> I would. I know people. I got you covered there. <laughs> We've been contracting it for a while. It's That's another great hop. We, we love that hop. So this next beer that I'm pouring, what is this? The it, Limbo Lager. Limbo Lager. That's our Japanese rice lager. Um, story behind this one is when I was home brewing a few years back, uh, I knew I was going to be taking a trip to Japan. And I knew I was going to be like participating in this big festival they have. It's a fighting float festival. Fighting um, float festival. Wait, what? Yeah, fighting float festival. It's pretty common in Japan. What they do is like in, in certain towns, there'll be like factions in the town. They'll each build their uh, floats. They're these big floats. And they basically have a bunch of people pulling ropes. They ram into each other. And then it becomes like a tug of war. And then there's a winner at the end of the wow. festival. That's it's like a so huge cool. version of like oh, yeah. wars or something. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's pretty wow. crazy. Um, so yeah, I knew I was going like to be doing that. It's so a lot of fun. So you made a beer after that. So I wanted to bring a beer. Wow. Mm. So I thought it would be cool to make a beer. I also wanted to make a lager at that time. So I figured I would do a rice lager, a Japanese rice lager. The inspiration for it was like an Asahi super dry. But this is a very different beer. This has, um, it does have sake rice, American rice, Pilsner, uh, malt, uh, six row. And it's a German lager yeast. So that gives it a little bit of sweetness. sweetness. Um, and it's dry and it's just, Really solid lager. Dude, this so. is this is this is a summer beer. Oh yeah. I'm I'm thinking of that you know really awesome 108 degree day that we just recently had, and this would have been perfect on that day. Nicely done. It's super clean. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank you. Crisp, mm -hmm. refreshing, very crushable. Very crushable. Yes, it is. So okay, this is a really great question to ask. Um, I work at a brewery also, and we too have a Japanese lager. When you have people come into your tasting room, what is the best way to describe what a Japanese lager is? Yeah, people kind of are like, is it all rice or what is this? So, I mean, it's a little unusual. I usually just tell them, you know, the ones that you know about are probably Kirin, mm -hmm. Asahi, Sapporo. Sapporo. And they're like, oh, okay. Okay. Um, 
rice. Well, technically, Budweiser uses rice. In well, so, so and that's, that's my next question. That's, 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 that's kind of always into... my segue. That's always like my kind of segue <laughs> thought. I don't ever say it, but that's always my segue thought because I know that they also use rice. So why is that not a Japanese lager, but it's named like an American well, lager? Well, so people, oh. there's this whole thing around rice, right? Like it's an adjunct and that gets a bad rap. And that's true. If you're using rice as a cheap ingredient and it's not enhancing the flavor of the beer and it's just all about cost, mm -hmm. like Budweiser uses it, then that's bad. But this is a rice lager. So, um, and it's it sake rice. So it's it's really used to enhance the beer and well, make that style. Huge difference in the flavor and aroma though. Oh, I mean, absolutely. It, it, yeah, this, I mean, you can taste the hops. You could taste everything in this. It's got a really nice bitterness that kind of lingers. Um, and it's really clean also. And you use some German hop varieties in this, right? Saas and Herzbrucker. Okay, well, Saas is Czech. Herzbrucker is German. So it's all over the place. Yeah. I like that. Saas, Herzbrucker, German lager yeast. Um, I played around using some different yeast before, but I really like how the German lager yeast adds to the flavor in this. Mm -hmm. I dig it, man. I do too. So you've got, so you brew beers for like everybody, right? People who like drink Budweiser might walk through the door and say, what do you have that's kind of closest that's, to it? That's a big reason for this beer too, because a lot of people literally will come in and they'll say, what's the lightest thing you have? And then I give them a glass of water. No. <laughs> so, well, you're, you're, you're in a very industrial <laughs> type of, you know, part of town also. You're right there in Kearney Mesa. You know, you're down the street from O'Brien's behind Fox Fives, like, I would assume they get a lot of people. I just got off work. I just want a beer. Oh yeah. And I don't exactly. want to. And I don't want to deal with convoy. I don't want to deal with Balboa. I just want a beer before I go home. Not everyone likes bitter IPAs, mm -hmm. and this is a great beer to have on the menu. Yep. Uh, it's light. It's crushable for yep. people who are just quote Coors Light drinkers or whatever. Right. Um, this this would work for them. It's kind of a gateway beer, getting people into the craft yes. beer. It's a gateway, it's a gateway. It's a gateway beer, right? Yeah. To have this, and they go, wow, I didn't know craft so. beer, I would like craft beer, right? And then they're, okay, well then maybe they And then they could take jump the next up step. to a pail, yeah, maybe. Exactly. Or, right. And Limbo is the first circle in, nine, in the nine circles of hell, so. True. Well, that's where the expression where came start. from, right? Yeah. Stuck in limbo. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I like that. So I, I, I always in between that. craft and not craft. No, I, I will. Yeah. Got one foot in, one foot out. You know, eventually we'll get that second foot in. And you're in the first circle. Well, right now we're <laughs> sitting here in limbo. <laughs> well, I think that we should go on to the next, the pale. So what is this? The prodigal pale ale? Prodigal pale ale. Prodigal. Um, and this one, so this is kind of the next level up. It's not too bitter. Um, it's pretty light on the IBU scale. Um, it's nice and clear. Do you guys you fine just... your beers or do you filter? That's no just... filtering. The, wow. I don't filter right my beers. Um, this is all just from process. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, cold crashing, whirlpooling, and bright tank. Yeah. You mentioned, so. you mentioned IBU. If we could just kind of like take a step back for a second and remind everybody what IBUs are and the difference that they have in different kinds of beers. So IBU, the International U Bittering? Bittering Units. Okay. Exactly. And I would say, you know, it's, it's a scale. I don't think breweries typically measure exact IBUs and not all IBUs are created equally, mm -hmm. um, but it does give you an idea of bitterness so this one is around 25 IBUs. Okay, so the lower the um, number, not so the bitter, right? Bitter the the higher it is, the more bitter. Okay, right. okay. So my double IPA is like 110 IBUs. Very bitter. Oh, that's very different uh, than what we're about yeah. to have at 25. And yeah. 20, I feel like 25 for a pale ale, that sounds a little bit on the low side. Is that not, or is that fairly average for a pale ale? It depends on the gravity. I mean, it's kind of relative to the malt side of it. And oftentimes the malt side, if it's elevated, will mask a lot of the hoppiness and bitterness. So it's kind of relative to the malt. Yeah, it's also like when you're using the hop during the boil, right? Okay. So for example, this particular beer, all of the hops are added at flame out and done in the whirlpool. So this is like all the hops are in the whirlpool 60 minutes. They're not boiled at all. So there's another um, thing. There's a difference between hoppiness and bitterness that Dan, people are more and more starting to, starting to find out about. So by adding them at the end of the boil, 
you're extracting a lot of the oils and resins and the flavor, but not so much the bitterness. Right. Oh, okay. Right. So, you're, so you can you're have the aromatics from it, but not right. So you could have a beer that's only 25 BUs, but it's super hoppy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Um, oh, that, yeah. That's yeah. That's kind of what I meant by like all oh, IBUs it's my are favorite beer equally, right? Because right? mm-hmm. right. you could have 25 IBUs and the hop was at the beginning of the boil, and that's going to taste more bitter than this one, for example, where all those hops were at the whirlpool. So I feel like so, <laughs> drinking this, you get the person who's like, oh, like I don't like hoppy beers. But I think, but when I hear that here, I don't like bitter beers. This is a hoppy beer, but it's not bitter. Exactly. That's usually what they're clumsily trying to say, mm-hmm. and they just not putting it in the right words. Yeah. So, so I, don't where, know, I don't know how anybody can not like hops. Well, so where does that lingo, where did that kind of blur <laughs> together? Where did that blur the bitterness, like, I don't like bitter versus I don't like hoppy? When did those two kind of You know, I think that's been around forever. I've been doing this for over 25 years, and when I, like, started in the business, we weren't allowed to say the word bitter. Because it was negative, right? It had a negative connotation. Oh, remember those commercials, the bitter beer face? Yeah, there'd be a person oh, taking like a <laughs> sip of beer and their face would collapse like this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get bitter beer face. Drink Keystone Light. Right. You know? And it would be like, oh, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> and but, which is so funny because now I would never would have known that, knowing that that's, you know, kind of a slam against craft beer. But it's impossible to describe certain styles of beers like IPAs without using the word bitter, mm-hmm. right? I mean, there should be some bitterness associated with the style. Pale ales, IPAs, double IPAs, and everything else. So, you know, you have to say bitter. Mm-hmm. And some bitterness is appropriate and desired in those styles. Definitely. I mean, you have to balance up the malt, right? Especially Wait a second. A maltier, I, thought that, I thought the city forgot about that fourth ingredient. Oh, yeah. Malt. Everything's a malt malt. I thought that malt. we forgot well, that. You know, <laughs> there's any malt. <laughs> there's a time and a place for everything when when beer is involved, right? Oh, um, yes. So like in a barley wine, especially an American barley wine, 110 IBUs would actually probably make it taste balanced, you know, or maybe somewhat hoppy and bitter. Mm. Nice segue into this beer. Isn't it? Slash, the name of this beer is so rad. I feel like this beer was named after me. It's called City of Dis IPA. I love that. That is such an awesome name. First of all, I have to know where the name came from. City of Dis is from Inferno and it is the capital city. Um, mm. And it actually overlaps a few circles in the geographical like, space. I feel like that's how San Diego feels about Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> We are the city of dis to them. We're like, well, you wish that you had the craft beer we have, but here's this lovely city of dis IPA just for you, Los Angeles. So you obviously were very inspired by Dante's Inferno. You named the brewery after him. I mean, a lot of people were, right? Some people think he actually made the trip. I mean, he describes it in such detail in the book that, you know. It's a great story. It's part of a three book series called The Divine Comedy, and it was written in 1326, circa-ish. And uh, he was exiled for writing the book, but um, it's a really interesting story if you think about it in the context of when it was written. I mean, that was unheard of, right? Mm -hmm. He's writing about the hypocrisy of politics at the time. It's very political, and of course about the Roman Catholic Church, and just um, so it was literally the Divine Comedy is the name of the, of the whole series, and Inferno was the first one, and there's Purgatory and Paradise. So um, there's a lot of cultural references that people say all the time that they don't even realize they're from Dante's Inferno. So um, If you had to pick your favorite circle, what's your favorite circle? Oh, gosh, I've never been asked that. Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you serious for having yeah. a brewery the same never, after you've never been asked I've that never before? I've never been asked that. Oh, wow. Wow. Put a little feather on that mm. cap. <laughs> I would probably say seven. What happens in seven? Just because seven has so much going on, there's multiple circles within seven. Mm. So seven encapsulates more of the sins um so it's just i guess more so if that's a circle more you're, content there so if you're in that circle you had like a good time in life oh yeah 
It, yeah. Living on the edge. If you're in that <laughs> circle, like, you, yeah. You live no. life to the fullest because you ended up in that circle, which had all those mini circles. Mean, you know, That's a circle I want to get into. Sure. Well, it'll be all right because I'll make beer. And, there we you know, go. We'll See, so well, I feel like there's going to be a lot of Sandy Brewers in that circle. I don't know. Uh, this what beer, circle's though, the one where they give you a bunch of paper cuts and pour lemon juice on it? <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. I hate that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, this beer though. So, City of Dis IPA. What does this come in at ABV wise? Ooh, uh, six point seven. Um, and this I one is it. this one is Mosaic Citra. Simcoe. And, uh, no Simcoe. No. Well, all Mosaic Citra. It has Munich malt, um, and Munich malt is a pretty dominating malt. Kind of um, toasty. So it does add some malt flavor and. People come in and they're like, wow, this has some malt in it. It's like, well, I, I've always liked to have malt in the beer too. So this one's pretty well balanced, not extremely bitter. Uses a magnum hop for the bittering hop, which is a really smooth hop. You can't kind of overdo that hop. It is so. balanced. It's incredibly balanced. Yes. And, and uh, it's, like I was saying earlier, this beer pays our rent. It's our flagship. Um, it's a great beer. And uh, we love mm. it. Uh, I have one particular question before we part ways, because I know we're on the last beer. Tell me about Drone Night. Drone Night is pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> drone Night happens at your tasting room in Kearney Mesa. Uh, first Friday of every month. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a buddy I used to work with many years ago. He called me and said, hey, I heard you were opening a brewery. I run this drone club. Can I come there and race drones and drink beer? And I was like, you're crazy um <laughs> you're not gonna fly drones in here um he's like just let me show you so he came down and he showed me like the drones are literally as big as this coaster oh they're little ones they're the they're micro the drones ones. okay and the technology in, in them is pretty amazing they're really small they're really light even if they crash into you it you know there's no harm and the guys who race them are so good so we have really high ceilings in the warehouse so we set up the course above everything and they fly around and um, How cool. they got cameras on them, which is really there neat. There is cameras on them, right? And they yeah. wear goggles sitting in the back. And these pilots see everything the drone sees. And pretty much every uh, first Friday, they race for a free growler. Oh, so that's so pretty right. intense. So you can just come and like watch these drone races basically happen above your head. Like, oh, yeah. That's, have it's you seen any like exciting. super gnarly crashes? There's always a few crashes. Yeah. Um, I don't a know, drone like, in my hair one time. <laughs> <laughs> Good right five minutes. <laughs> they couldn't find it. You know, my hair was blocking out the camera. That is awesome. <laughs> that sounds like fun, actually. Oh, I check that out. Like yeah. fun. What we get food the trucks. First Friday next Let's month? go. Let's go. All right. And uh, also, uh, they have the one year anniversary of hosting that at the brewery. So oh, yeah. that's that coming happening? up next month. Ooh. All right. Ooh, so cool. first Friday of August, then? First that's Friday of August. Out? Um, first Friday of August drone, and then I think the uh, 18th and the 25th, we're going to do uh, one-year parties. We're going to be releasing a barrel-aged, which has been aging about a year. Nice. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. And, Where's the uh, best place to keep up with what's going on with you guys at Vince? What? Probably Instagram. Instagram? Okay. Ooh, I like yeah. I like that. It's a little, a little bit more indie than the Facebook. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. I dig that. Yeah. Instagram, Facebook, and um, you know, we try and post, post as much as we can. But mm -hmm. Sweet. Right yeah. on. So. Well, Darren, Jeremy, thank you so much for coming by. Yeah, uh, pleasure. I'm Good job so on the beers. stoked oh, yeah. to have gotten to try your beers. I've been to your guys' spot once. Everything I tried there was awesome. Super Sweet. cool ambiance, especially if you just want to, like, chill and have a beer and not really like be bothered with a bunch of like stuff going oh, yeah, on, you know what I mean? That's like, circle nine, like for I sure. take that, and you know, like like no offense to the kids that go out to the breweries, <laughs> but it just does. I know you, I'm sure you guys are kid friendly, but oh, yeah. I don't see a bunch of children oh, running no. around all <laughs> no. the time, which you know. If you're ever on the 52 trying to get like you know east or whatever, yes. and traffic's backed up, just pull off and have beers. Forget that it's... parking oh, yeah. lot that's called the 805 or the 52. Yeah, just go to Circle We're Nine. we for you. Hang <laughs> out. Yep. Jeremy and Darren will you. be there because it seems that they're always there. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping no by. I really, really appreciate it. Paul, as always, you give me an excuse to drink on camera. I appreciate you give me an that. Excuse. 
And uh, thank you. You can hear Paul come on the Moog Show every Friday morning and school Moog and Jared, because I don't know if you know this or not. We're trying to teach them about craft beer. So listen to how that goes every Friday morning when Paul comes in. And if you want to read, see any previous episodes of Beer for Breakfast ABV, check them out at 91x.com. Uh, thank you. And oh, no, my glass is empty. We uh, oh, we can fix that. <laughs> fixing it. It's being fixed. <laughs> Cheers to All right. Limbo. Cheers to Limbo. The circle Cheers nine. Cheers to Circle Nine. Salute. Yes. Thank you.